We're now going to look at warping in Ableton Live. Warping is a fundamental feature of Ableton Live in terms of how it processes audio in the audio clips. Warping refers to Ableton's built-in time-stretching algorithm that stretches audio files so they'll, they'll play back in synchronization with the master tempo designated here. That means that any audio clip, regardless of its original tempo, when warped properly, will play back at the master tempo of all the other clips in the live set, ensuring everything stays synchronized. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is go to your preferences and disable the auto warp of long samples. Ableton's automatic warping is very good for shorter files, but for longer ones, it's not so good. Today, we're going to start by looking at warping a longer file, in fact, a full-length song. This is going to be very common for anyone planning to use Ableton for DJing, but the principles of warping a long sample can also be applied to warping shorter samples as well, and should give you a firm foundation for warping shorter files. So. Double click on the clip here if you have the basic live set installed. If you did not purchase the full bundle and you're working with a Blake live set template, please bring any uh, full song, preferably electronically produced for the purposes of this module, into your live set by locating it in your browser and bringing the file into an audio clip like so. You can also drag and drop from iTunes or an Explorer Finder window into any available audio track clip slot in Ableton. Now that we've done this, let's zoom in on the waveform. Double click on the clip to get the clip view. Now hover the mouse over the waveform and drag down and to the right to zoom in and up to zoom out. Drag down to zoom in, up to zoom out. Now, what we're looking at here is a waveform. For anyone familiar with other audio platforms or who's done audio editing before, this will look familiar. But for anyone who has not worked with audio before, it might take a little time to get used to what you're looking at. The waveform is a visual representation of the audio file. The Larger waves represent louder sounds. Amplitude, in other words volume, is measured by the height of the wave, whereas pitch is measured by the frequency of the wave. These little squiggly lines denote a higher pitch, whereas big wide lines like this denote a lower pitch. So we can see that these are very loud, low waveforms, probably indicating a kick drum. Now, in order to warp the file, you'll have to turn Warping on by clicking the Clip Warp button here. You'll notice that when warping is engaged, we'll see a grid overlay on the waveform. Now, these lines through each side of the audio, the top representing the left channel of the stereo waveform and the bottom representing the right channel of the audio waveform, the lines going through the middle represent zero crossings, in other words, silence. So, when the waveform jumps out of the zero crossing, emerging from silence, we have what's called a transient, these sharp shapes that can be seen here. And you'll notice in Live 8, there's a small triangle at most of these transient intervals where you can insert what's called a warp marker. Warp markers are instructions for Ableton telling it how and when certain parts of the audio should be played back in terms of timeline. You'll see that the very first transient marker has this green block over it. That means that this transient marker has been turned into a warp marker. Now, this triangle with the line here represents the start marker. This is where playback of the file will start. Finally, above that is the loop brace, which is currently disengaged. Looping is turned off. The first thing you want to do when warping any large waveform is to find the very first transient, the zero crossing. Then you'll want to write or 
option click to get the contextual menu and you'll set 111 here. This ensures that playback of the audio will occur from the right position.